Um, so it's funny because, you know, usually you sit on this side, but I also sit on this side. But yeah. then when you first started working here, I called you out for being in my seat yep. in the other office. So um, I went again. Yeah. But you, you took my seat again. But that's okay. That's I'm, okay. I'm filling in for uh, Pimp Daddy D over here. So that could be your good Batman. side. So I got, I got, yeah, this could that be my be. good side. That's women, cool. women always have the right side, the, the, the side they want. And so I'm like, hey, I'll be respectful. Yes. Let's see, it's my good side. Okay. Um, what I wanted to talk about, I figured maybe I could take the lead. Yeah, let's this do one. this. Go for it. Um, so, more of the benefits of starting investing with smaller amounts mm -hmm. because, you know, people think you have to be rich to invest, you have to have all this extra money, but really you don't need to at all. And I feel like with the younger crowd, that's even one where it gets more intimidating because you think, oh, when people talk about their investing, they're not going to talk about it when they have smaller amounts. So it's like you can. There are like benefits to it. It's not a um, like you have to have $100,000. Like right. it actually is almost better sometimes to have smaller amounts um, with some of those benefits there. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. It, it, I mean, everybody yeah. started somewhere. And, you know, the idea, I think where I see people get discouraged sometimes, they start with, let's just say, $1,000. And $1,000, they're discouraged because if they get, you know, let's just say a 7% return for the year, that's $70. Yeah. And it's like, awesome, now I've got 1070 Yeah. But compound growth is huge. And, yeah. And so the opportunity there is it's just sticking with it, getting started, and getting where you want to be because – you know, when you have a hundred thousand and you get a seven percent return, now you made seven grand. Yeah. And you have a million dollars and you made a seven percent return. Now you have seventy thousand. That's yeah. that's just it's phenomenal to see once it actually gets to those numbers. Yeah. That's all like you have the compounding, especially when you start younger. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't think if you're eighteen and you start investing right now, good for you, but a lot of people won't realize it until they're 22, 23, they go, oh gosh, I have to actually make money moves now, yeah. but I'm only saving an extra 200 a month. Put the 200 in investing because now you have the almost like dollar cost averaging side of it because right. you're going to put in less money, but more often. So instead of just dumping in 20 grand, then it's like, okay, you have 200 that's going to equate to that eventually, but you might get a lower price on these stocks here, and then it averages out to be lower than the actual price. So that's always something good to look at and kind of why we even push on recurring deposits as it is. Yeah. But it that's a huge benefit to putting in less and starting smaller. And it gets you out of your own way because yeah. you've got people that are investing and they want to start investing and they're like, you know, ultimately what you do is always FOMO kicks in and it's like, when the market's really running up, that's when people are like, all right, you know, I need to get my money in. Yeah. But that's not the time to get it in. Yeah. That's actually the wrong time. It, you shouldn't time the markets per se, but at the same time, if you find some opportunity and the market's down and you have cash, get that money to work. So this allows you to be, basically be able to just drip that money in over time, like you say, that dollar cost average approach to take the emotion out of it so that you're yeah. not sitting there trying to figure out, oh, my money, when's the best time to do this? When's the best time to do that? Because ultimately that will lead to, you know, what they call analysis, paralysis by analysis. You start trying to factor in things and figure out when should I do this? And then like, it just, yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. That's you don't true. end up doing anything. That's true. And with the um, recurring deposits, like if you were to set it up to, you have 200 a month, you set it up for $50 a week, you don't even have to think about it. Yep. Like it's the ease of it. You just, okay, $50 I know is coming out of my savings, my checking account every week. You don't have to log in every single time and go, okay, well, how much can I afford to put in right now? Just a small amount once a week, whatever it is, like it makes it so much easier and I don't want to say stress-free, but less stressful in the way of just knowing you're doing the right thing, but it's not absolutely draining your mindset and your finances, I guess, as a whole. Yeah. Um, but that, like, the ease of it, that's yep. a huge thing. Um, there was one other point I wanted to make with um, – I keep saying um a lot. That's right. one thing I'm working – that's one of my <laughs> my goals for 2024 is to say um and like less. Okay. Because – somebody's If somebody's watching, let us know in the comments. Yes. Story. How many times we got. How many times? Oh, well, let's have Cody put like an um ticker up okay. here. Um, <laughs> look at I just there did it go. again. Oh, oh, I, oh I my saw gosh. It. I was just going to let it ride. Ooh, okay. 
every time I say, um, I'm just going to like, I'm really going to think about it now. Yeah. Okay. All right. What's your last point? What a pause. A pause instead of an um. Okay. So my last point that I was thinking of is uh, dividend okay. reinvestment. Yeah. So yeah. things where you say it's not necessarily you're going super aggressive. Like this is a savings account and it's not your primary Roth account. Um, it's <laughs> just keep, I'm going to think about it every time I say um now. The... You have a savings account that's maybe like in a money market fund or in a, a primarily dividend invested fund. If you have the chance to just keep letting those dividends reinvest, you have that same snowball effect, but even higher now. Right. So things where it's uh, like it's a dividend stock, but you put less into it, you're going to get the dividend every time. Yeah. So even letting that just keep growing and growing and growing, it's like a double not, I don't know how to weigh me, but it's a double positive. So yeah. you have the smaller recurring investment and the interest or dividend coming in. You have that double win there with the smaller amount. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've got to look at, you know, people always chase the dividend stocks when they're younger and they're like, yeah. oh, let me get in this dividend stock. But we've always talked about growth oftentimes, you know, because dividend stocks usually, you know, they, they just don't grow as much. You, you want to focus on the growth. But ultimately, if you're investing in, let's just say you you invest in, you know, a lot of the S&P 500 stocks, you're going to have some dividends in there. And making sure that those dividends are going back and getting reinvested and getting to work for you, because if they aren't getting reinvested and they're just sitting in cash, then ultimately that's going to play against you. And so you, you always want those going into the market. Got to be careful with the focusing on growth, growth when you're younger. I got a lot of backlash on that. Yeah. Um, on my Roth IRA video. Oh, man. People were saying, no, you need dividends when you're younger. And I'm like, no, nah, oh, they, they gracious. The, the YouTube crowd gets tough on that. And they they, but I, hey, you know, I'll take the stance all day. We've done a lot of a lot of videos talking about it, showing a lot of different things because I've literally taken, you know, Nerd Wallet and all these different ones and say, OK, what are the top 10 dividend stocks? Yeah. You take those and you actually run those through uh, some software that we have and we will look at the charts yeah. and we'll actually factor in even with dividend investing. Your money was down with some of these dividend stocks. Yeah. The actual portfolio. You're wanting you're not focused on income right this second. You were focused solely on that growth there. So that's a just a little other nugget that I'll go oh, to bat yeah. for you, Haley. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I was I'm gonna double down. I planned on doubling down. Just because there's like when there's a lack of knowledge too, you just don't know. And so if you can have somebody show you, well, you know, the dividend is not necessarily wrong, but this is so much better. People don't know that. It's but true. Um, well, nice work. Good nice grief! Work. I'm gonna think about saying ah, um every good. time now. No, it's, I think this, it's so funny. This was this is great. You got some really good points that you brought up. Do you have a ending point? I already thought of mine because I thought he was gonna be here, and he always throws me off with that. All right, I don't have anything. Oh, so what you, don't you have got? Anything? Okay, so I I just got um, orange chicken at my lunch, and you know you get the little fortune cookie. That's like, oh, your positivity is contagious. That's what mine said today. Oh. And I was getting really hangry. So I was like, mm, nope, this is not true right now. But now I feel much better. And I hope my positivity is contagious on you. I, I'm, I'm smiling every time you say um. <laughs> yeah, every time. Every time we say um. There you go. But, All right. Uh, well, keep it positive out there. That's, yes. that's, that's the motto for the day. Positive and... Steady investing. Yeah, steady investing. <laughs> Just do it.